In this chapter, we're going to look at aqueous solutions. So what's a solution? Uh, a solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more pure substances. So there's two, two parts to a solution. You have a solute and you have a solvent. The solute is the part that's in lesser amount, and it's the thing that dissolves in the solvent. The solvent is the one you have in greater amount. So if you had something like um, like salt water mixture, the salt would be the solute. It dissolves in the water, which is the solvent. And whenever you have water as your solvent, we call that an aqueous solution. So this is an aqueous solution. So let's look at that process a little bit more in depth here. So here you have these uh, green and purple spheres here. The purple one is a, a sodium. The uh, green one is chlorine. It's a chloride ion. So you have sodium chloride. This is your salt. Now what happens when you put it in water, it starts to dissociate into ions. That solvent mo water molecules start to rip apart that, that crystal structure and they surround them. They solvate each one of those little ions. Uh, and that process is called dissociation. Dissociation is when you dissociate into ions. An ionic substance is going to dissolve in water. It's going to split up into ions. Dissociation is really like you're splitting it up into ions. Um, and something that any, a substance that dissociates into ions is called an electrolyte. Uh, you may have heard of electrolytes before. If you like Gatorade, Gatorade has a whole bunch of electrolytes in it. There's a bunch of salts in there that dissociates into ions. You have ions. Um, Non-electrolyte is something that does not dissociate. It, it may dissolve in water, but it does not dissociate into ions. So an electrolyte is an, uh, an example of something like sodium chloride. Right? When you take that and put it in water, it's going to dissociate into like sodium ions and chloride ions, it's an ionic compound. If you had something like um, sugar, we'll see what the glucose, C6H12O6, when you put that in water, it stays together. <laughs> it doesn't split up into like carbons and hydrogens and oxygens. It just stays like one complete unit. And that's a, that's a non-electrolyte. You can dissolve sugar in water, right? It dissolves, but it doesn't dissociate. It doesn't split up into ions. It stays in its molecular form. So soluble ionic compounds tend to be electrolytes. Molecular compounds uh, tend to be non-electrolytes, unless you have um, acids and bases. You can have strong acids, you can have weak acids, strong bases, weak bases. Um, then you can also have like, weak electrolytes. So strong electrolytes, any ionic compound, if it's a soluble ionic compound, that's going to be a strong electrolyte. Um, if you have a strong acid, acids are molecular. So if you have a strong acid, it's a strong electrolyte. Um, all strong bases are soluble ionic compounds here. So soluble ionic compounds are, are strong electrolytes anyway. Um, a weak electrolyte, if you have a weak acid or a weak base, and we'll talk all about acids and bases in this chapter. And what do we mean by strong? What do we mean by weak? weak? Strong is something that dissociates completely. Weak is something that only partially dissociates. And remember what dissociation is, you're splitting things up in, into ions. Um, so non-electrolytes are, if you're not a um, weak acid or weak base, and you're not a strong acid or strong base, then you're a non-electrolyte, so something molecular compounds. Mo molecular means they're made of um, non-metals, so things that are in the top right part of the periodic table, so these carbons, hydrogens, oxygens, like sugar is a non-electrolyte. Uh, this is this picture is just showing you a little test for whether or not you have an electrolyte. Electrolytes conduct electricity. Um, so if you have ions floating around in here, the, the light bulb will turn on. So if you have pure water, just absolutely pure water, there's no ions involved there. Um, it's there's no you know the light doesn't turn on. It's it's a non-electrolyte. It doesn't conduct electricity. If you put a little sugar in there, also no lights, <laughs> so it's a non-electrolyte as well. But if you put pour salt into here, you have a salt water solution. Um, it will conduct electricity because the salt is an electrolyte. So again, strong electrolytes are things that dissociate completely, and weak electrolytes are things that only partially dissociate. Uh, so strong acids, strong bases are strong electrolytes. Soluble ionic compounds are also strong electrolytes. So how do you know if an ionic compound is going to be soluble? We're going to look at that in, uh, later on in this, in this chapter. We're going to have to memorize some solubility rules. And yes, I said memorize. We'll have to memorize things. You can do it. Um, weak electrolytes are weak acids and weak bases. So you're going to just memorize the strong acids, you're going to memorize the strong bases, and any other acid is going to be, uh, acid or base will be weak. So let's look at a little example of, um, of dissociation. So here's a picture. We have ions in, in a solution. We have a couple positive ions. We have 
um, I'm, I'm minus two ion, and the question's asking us, so look at this diagram. Um, is it you know magnesium chloride? Is it potassium chloride? Is it uh, potassium sulfate? Uh, which solution does the drawing best represent? So to answer this question, let's take each one of these ions and kind of figure out what or each one of these ionic compounds and figure out what kind of ions represent them. Or, yeah. So magnesium has a plus two charge and Cl2 means I have two chloride ions. So the ratio would be uh, one plus one ion for every two minus one ions if, if this is what magnesium chloride looked like. If it was potassium chloride, potassium has a plus one charge, chloride ion has a minus one charge. Um, so it would be one to one. And then this K2SO4, SO4 is a polyatomic ion. Um, we'll look at these and uh, we've we've looked at these for um, in chapter two when we started naming. Right, so we have potassium plus and then one SO4 with a two minus. So I have um, two positive charges for every one negative two charge ion. So over here, if you kind of group these together, I have, um, let's see, do I have any plus two charges? No, so it's definitely not uh, magnesium chloride. I have some plus one charges, but I don't have any minus one charges. Uh, so it's looking like potassium sulfate. Uh, and let's see if that's true. So I have two plus one ions for every one minus two. And I can kind of circle that so it, it, follow, it follows the ratio. Um, so this would be K2SO4. So if you think about what's happening here, I have K2SO4. I'm going to put that in water and it's going to split up into two potassium ions and one uh, sulfate ion. All right, so we're going to start writing some reactions uh, and looking at how now, how now that I have all these ions floating around solutions, suppose I reacted it with something else, what I get, um, what kind of products would I get? So I'm going to take some compounds, I'm going to dissociate them into ions, and then they're going to bump into each other. And sometimes they'll reform and form uh, a solid, and that solid is called uh, precipitate. And so a precipitation reaction um, is going to happen.